Welcome back to another episode of Road to CPTS, where I cover my journey on studying and practicing for the Hack the Box CPTS exam until I eventually pass it. In this episode, I'm going to talk all about practicing for the CPTS exam. I'll cover what I've done so far to practice, what I plan to do in the future, and I'll also give some recommendations for how you can get some hands-on practice before taking the exam. Just for a quick recap on what the CPTS is, it is a certification by Hack the Box, that is the Certified Penetration Testing Specialist certification. It is a certification that requires you to take 28 modules that will give you a very good foundation for performing network penetration tests. The CPTS exam, in my opinion, is the certification to get to prove your hands-on capabilities or technical capabilities for performing penetration tests. While it may not be as recognized as something like the OSCP, it is much more involved and realistic to what you may see in an actual penetration test. So if you're serious about getting into penetration testing or you want to get really good at CTFs, I highly recommend doing at least the penetration tester path on Hack the Box Academy. And if you want to prove those skills and put something on your LinkedIn resume, then going for the CPTS exam is a great way to do that. And I truly believe that it will be a more recognized certification in the future, either on par with the OSCP or perhaps even better. With that out of the way, if you've done all of the modules in the Penetration Tester Hack the Box Academy path, except for attacking enterprise networks, you can save that one for later. And you're probably looking for some extra preparation and boxes you can do to get that hands-on experience to prepare yourself for the exam. So to get that extra practice, the first thing I recommend doing, and this is the first thing that I did after doing the entire path, is using IPSEC's CPTS prep playlist on YouTube. This is a playlist of 22 Hack the Box CTFs that the Hack the Box user, employee, and YouTuber recommends for preparing for the Hack the Box CPTS exam. I've just recently completed completed all 22 of these boxes, with a small caveat that the final two boxes are insane machines and I would have never been able to solve those by myself. So for those last two boxes I just watched how IPSEC did it and took any notes that I thought were going to help me on the exam. But all the other boxes I at least tried myself, and I do highly recommend doing these boxes if you lack that hands-on practice. And I see some criticism and things like the Hack the Box Reddit that say that this playlist is either outdated or it strays away from the CPTS material. Which I do agree in some of these boxes, some of the ways to get a foothold or to privesk is not covered in the CPTS exam. But IPSEC even came out and said himself that the boxes aren't going to be a one-to-one, -one, everything on the box is covered in the CPTS. He chose these boxes because at least one of the methods for privesk or for gaining a foothold uses concepts that is taught in the CPTS prep or the penetration tester modules. So if you do decide to use this playlist for practice, don't get discouraged if you can't find the foothold or the privesk and you thought you've tried everything that was taught in the CPS exam because that method might not actually be something that was taught. But it will allow you to improve your critical thinking skills, your enumeration skills, and doing vulnerability research to find that foothold or privesk that was not covered in the CPTS prep. But like I said, on all of these boxes, at least one part of the CTF either the foothold or the privesk has a concept that is covered in the CPTS exam. And sometimes both the foothold and the privesk will be covered in the materials for the CPTS. If you do decide to use IPSEX playlist, I recommend doing each of the boxes in adventure mode, which is the standard mode that you would do CTFs in, where you have no hints and you just have uh, to find a user flag and a root flag. If you find yourself absolutely stuck on the box in adventure mode, that is when I would switch to guided mode and work to the point where you got stuck. And hopefully the guided mode hints along the way will get you unstuck and be able to get you over that hump and then continue in adventure mode. But if you're on one of those boxes that includes a privesk or a foothold that was not covered in the CPTS and you have no idea how to do it, that is when I would turn to a walkthrough or IPSEX video on how to cover that step. And then once you've completed that box in either adventure mode or guided mode, I would then go and watch IPSEC's video on that box from start to finish. And that is because IPSEC is really good at this stuff. He may cover some technique or tool that you've never used before, but you find is a lot easier to do thing that you're trying to accomplish compared to what you would have done. You may have some tips and tricks for certain enumeration methods or even different ways to exploit a vulnerability that you may already have a way to do it, but he can do it even better. And something that IPSEC does in a lot of his videos is he goes beyond root, meaning that after he's rooted the box, he goes and shows the underlying technology that was flawed or other ways that were intended that you could have attacked the machine, which is just great for your own learning and to add to your tool set. Another thing that I should mention is that when you're doing these boxes, you should be going through your methodology, or in other words, your checklist of things to try depending on where you are on the box. If you haven't developed a methodology yet, this should be your number one priority. I have a whole video talking about creating methodologies for the CPTS where I go over my own methodologies. So you can watch that video, I'll put it on the screen and post it in the description of this video. 
And if you join my Discord, I have a PDF of all of my methodologies for things like initial enumeration, web server enumeration, Linux and Windows Privesk, and attacking Active Directory. So if that's something you're interested in looking at, you can join the Discord to see it. If you've already done Ipsec's YouTube playlist and you want even more prep like I do, Hack the Box actually posted their own official track for CPTS preparation. This was brought to my attention by XT3 in our Discord, so shout out to him for sharing this with us. But similar to Ipsec's YouTube playlist, this is a compilation of 16 Hack the Box machines that all use techniques covered in the CPTS path. So this is even more CTF practice that you can use, and I'm sure Ipsec has a video for every single one of these boxes in case you get stuck. So just like my recommendations for the Ipsec playlist, you should go through all of these machines in adventure mode, Use guided mode if you get stuck just to get over that hump. And then if you really get stuck and you have no idea where to go, that's when I would look at a walkthrough or use Ipsec's YouTube videos to figure out how you should have done that enumeration or exploitation or privesque or whatever you got stuck on. And if you want even more CTFs for preparation, I also found this intro to Dante track. Dante is a pro lab on Hack the Box, which is a lab environment with multiple machines where you have to do lateral movement to take over the entire domain. So similar to what you would do on the CPTS exam, a lot of people recommend doing Dante as preparation for the CPTS because it's a whole lab environment with multiple machines. So you have to get a foothold on one, escalate our privileges, pivot to a different machine, and then repeat the process until you've owned everything in the entire network. So doing these boxes and challenges in Intro to Dante should give you even more practice for the CPTS. And it's a good segue into my next recommendation, which is actually doing some pro labs, including Dante. This recommendation is a bit overkill and it can be kind of pricey. Prolabs are an entirely different subscription that you have to pay for if you want to do them. Yeah, so Prolabs are an extra $49 a month or $490 a year to get access to all of them. So it's definitely quite pricey and can be overkill for prepping for the CPTS. I would only really do this if you have the extra cash to spare and you want practice doing lateral movement and pivoting from machine to machine because pivoting isn't really something that you do in single CTFs where you just have one box. So you do get good practice with that stuff, but not entirely necessary and like I said, quite pricey. But just to show you what these pro labs are, one I see recommended a lot on things like the Hack the Box Reddit is Dante. We can see it's a beginner difficulty pro lab that includes 14 machines and 27 flags. We get a little introduction. We see that this lab covers enumeration, exploit development, lateral movement, privesque, and web app attacks. We also get our entry point of a IP address range, and we also have the 1010.1010.2 IP address as out of scope. So you would treat this lab like a penetration test or the actual CPTS exam, gaining a foothold on one of the machines and then pivoting from machine to machine until you've compromised the entire network or domain. Personally, I'm going to see how I feel after doing the official CPTS prep track on Hack the Box, if I want more practice or if I want to practice with lateral movement and pivoting. If I do decide to do the pro lab, I'll probably just buy one month of it for 49 bucks and I'll do the Who Lab. I know it's a funny name. That is actual beginner lab that is offered by Hack the Box um, just to get a feel for how it works. And then I would, I would do Dante as well. Some other pro labs that I've seen recommended on the Hack the Box Reddit are Zephyr and Offshore. I believe these are both intermediate pro labs. I think doing them would probably be overkill. I've seen some people say that if you can do Zephyr and Offshore, they're considered harder than CPTS. So if you can do those, you're probably in great shape for the CPTS exam. And the last recommendation that I see everyone giving, and is something that I'm going to say for last, is doing the Attacking Enterprise Networks module in the Penetration Tester Path for last, and doing it completely blind. I've seen from many people that have taken the CPTS exam that the AEN module is the closest thing that is comparable to the exam itself. They do say that the AEN module and the exam are still two totally different beasts, so you can't really make it a one-to-one -one comparison. So I've seen many people recommend that you should do the Attacking Enterprise Networks module completely blind, meaning that you don't use any of the hints or the walkthroughs that is provided on the actual module itself. You just spin up the network and you treat it like it's going to be the exam. You time yourself, you work through your methodologies, you write up a report, and you should use this as your best gauge for how prepped you are for the CPTS exam. If you can work through the entire AEN module without any hints and you complete a report in those 10 days, then you should be in great shape to take the actual CPTS exam. So like I said, I will be trying that and I'm saving this one for absolutely last. I'm a bit of an over-preparer, so I wanna get all of the practice in that I can first before trying to go for something like this. But that's it for this video on practicing for the CPTS. If you enjoyed or found this video useful, please like and subscribe for more content like this and join my Discord if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.